What's up guys, welcome back to Malt Mondays. This week I'm taking a look at my first Irish whiskey review and I'm doing the Napog Castle 16 year old, the Twinwood. So they've kind of updated their line recently I believe and they've got some new bottlings and I believe that's partly to do with the fact that they now source their whiskey from Bushmills uh, rather than the old Daily Distillery or maybe it's Cooley, Cooley or Daily. Um, so Napog Castle is a sourced Irish whiskey. It's single malt, and Bush Mills is now the only operating Irish distillery that makes single malt whiskey. Um, I believe Tolmer Dew has started adding uh, some recently, but I'm not sure if they're distilling it themselves. They probably are. Um, and I know there's a few others like, uh, like um, Teeling has a single malt, but that may have been sourced originally and is now they're producing it themselves but for a while bush mills has been the only one so for a 16 year old whiskey um it's got to be from bush mills you know because teeling wasn't around and uh so that's starting to become a little more prevalent again but irish whiskey as the brand or as the category is reviving now um some of these single malts uh, like Napog Castle are going to, I feel like, probably get less notoriety um, because for a while you really didn't have very many higher-end Irish whiskeys. You had some of the Jameson higher-end ones, like their 18-year-old, their uh, re gold reserve or gold label. I don't remember what, what it's called. And you had red breast and you had green spot and yellow spot. Um, and that was about it. And now you're starting to get teeling coming in, creating single malts, single grain whiskeys that sell for premium. Um, you're getting a few other players in the category as Irish whiskey is kind of resurging on the tails of the scotch industry, in my opinion. Um, it's still nowhere near to the point that it used to be. Um, Irish whiskey, you know, before Prohibition was insanely popular worldwide and now it's down to just a few distilleries but finally we've got a few more coming back so that's a good thing so we've got napog castle here and napog castle was originally created because this guy bought this castle uh mark andrews back in the 50s 60s and he re renovated this castle and kind of used the it as a warehouse to store some casks of whiskey that he purchased and he named his whiskeys after this castle, uh, but he didn't distill it himself. So it's always been a source whiskey. That's not a new thing. Um, they've just moved to Bush Mills because the distillery that they were sourcing from closed a while ago. So this is single malt, which, but it's still distilled three times. And what they've done with this one is they've done 14 years in uh, ex-bourbon barrels, and then they've done an additional two years in sherry. Um, and hence the Twinwood name. And this was originally limited to 4,000 bottles. So this is bottle 3,823 of 4,000. Uh, however, I've seen other bottlings of this that say out of 5,000. So I don't know if they initially planned a production run of only 4,000 and then uh, updated it because it was selling well or there's more demand or if they did a second run of it. Um, I'm also suspicious that the second bottle I found may have been a knockoff that uh, copied everything with the label correctly and then just changed the number, got that wrong or something. Um, but I'm not really sure. I wasn't able to find out. Uh, I tried looking it up and probably could have searched harder to figure that out, but it doesn't really matter. Um, it's just one of those things where probably they change the numbering on the bottles as they realize they have more whiskey than they originally thought. So, uh, the triple distillation kind of, I would expect this to be a lot smoother than scotch. And not to say scotch isn't smooth because most scotches are once you get above like 50 or $60, but triple distilling, it really makes it even lighter. So I, I would expect to see more of the cask influence on this whiskey. Uh, and less of a distillery characteristic relative to scotch, where a lot of times you can tell what distillery, um, you know, you can recognize the same characteristics throughout a distillery's whiskeys 
just by the spirit itself, much less the wood that it's in. And it is a little bit of a treat finding an older Irish whiskey. Uh, they're not nearly as prevalent as scotch is, as I was saying before. But I have a few problems with this one. The first is it's bottled at 40% ABV. So right away, um, I already know they're just trying to stretch their stock as far as it'll go. A triple distilled whiskey should easily be able to hold up to extra ABV and not seem sharp. It should be smooth enough to easily handle 46%. Uh, especially at 16 years if they're using good quality casks. And the second thing uh, I will give them credit for is I believe they're naturally colored. Uh, it doesn't say it on here as far as I know. Um, nope. It doesn't say natural coloring, but uh, I have read that they use natural coloring only. And we're going to see how this tastes. So, on the nose. I definitely pick out sherry first, but... There's surprisingly little depth to it. Um, this retails for originally $100, so... I'm expecting a lot out of this just based on the price. But I actually get a little bit of a nail polish uh, remover on the nose. And I feel like at 40% ABV, 16 years old and $100, there's absolutely no reason I should be smelling alcohol at all. There's some of the nice grassy, um, light kind of hay notes that I tend to get with Irish whiskeys. Definitely smells like a young whiskey. It doesn't smell like a 16 year old whiskey. We'll see how it tastes. Wow, so it definitely goes down really smooth. I don't know why on the nose there's that alcohol. Oh wow, it gets super oaky. It's, um, it's actually extremely oaky on the palate. I don't really smell the oak that much though. Yeah, the nose is just like really light grass and hay and subtle sherry. Maybe a touch of oak, but on the palate, it's actually like oak is the predominant flavor here. Um, it fades into some of the creamy and grassy notes uh, that you get with Irish whiskeys. Hmm. There is some sherry, but it kind of fades really quickly. And at 40% ABV, this doesn't have a very nice mouthfeel. Um, I mean, it is very smooth. Uh, the nose, I'm not really sure why it smells like alcohol as much as it does relative to how smooth it is. It could just be that this bottle's getting fairly low. Um, so some of it's evaporated out into the bottle and I just need to let it sit in the glass. But I kind of feel like it's unusual for this uh, low proof of a whiskey to have that much alcohol in the nose. But I have to say, there's literally no burn at all. Um, you can you can sip this neat all day, no problem. What I am gonna say though is, at a hundred dollars, this doesn't remotely have the complexity that it should. Um, it doesn't have the depth of flavor that it should, and really, um, 
I don't know. I would never spend a hundred dollars on this. I got this for about half of that. So for me, I feel like it was pretty well spent money. Um, I'm not thrilled with this whiskey, even at, even at $50. I think it's just good. But if you find it for 50 to $75 and you've had other Napog castles and you know that you like their style, um, or if you like Bushmills style in general, I would recommend picking this up because um, at that price point, it's not terrible. The Really, the problem I find is that it's thin. Um, the 40% ABV is kind of inexcusable on that pricey of a whiskey. And especially at this age, it should be able to handle a lot more. And I can tell from the nose, it can't. On the palate, it certainly could. Um, it could easily be 43 or 46 percent, and you'd be fine. And the nose is opening up more. Um, the alcohol's gone away a bit. Starting to get a little more of the sherry and dry sherry fruit notes. Not like a resinous sherry like a Macallan. It's just a touch, kind of like a Balvenie Doublewood. But honestly, I would buy a Balvenie Doublewood over this. Um, I really don't know why you would buy this over a similar, similarly priced scotch. Um, other than that it is a little bit smoother. Um, but I feel like any 40% scotch that costs $100 is going to be just as smooth or smoother than this. So this is definitely a miss um, from Napog Castle. And I've had their 12 year and it's pretty good but again i find it slightly pricey for what it is so thank you guys for watching please subscribe to my channel up here and if you've had napog castle please let me know what you think of it down in the comments below um like i said i don't think this one's really quite worth the money but if you find it on a good deal uh it's worth picking up and please come back next week i'll have more videos for you thanks for watching